Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. It is Wednesday, or Wednesday, August 19th, 2020, and it is a beautiful, almost fall-esque day in Minnesota. I am again just south of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Temperature right now is 77 degrees, and light wispy clouds. It's uh, just a perfect day. No humidity. I have not felt any bites from mosquitoes, the state bird of Minnesota, yet. So that is so cool. Yay, yay, yay. And it is the middle part of the week. I have been busier than all get out with doing deliverance sessions, with doing uh, teachings, with writing blogs, with scheduling new appointments to speak all over America. It is amazing to help people get restored to freedom. Yay. So welcome, Tina Marie Kirkpatrick. Welcome to Anne Rafferty from Chicago. Going to see you in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to that. Uh, what, Plainfield, I believe, is where you're at? Uh, out, what, 30 miles from downtown Chicago. And uh, speaking of Chicago, I'm doing, just scheduled this um, yesterday, but I'm doing, I'm coming to Chicago for the first time ever to do ministry. And I've been asked to do it for the last couple of years. And the opportunity finally presented itself. The Lord said to do it. And so I'm coming to Chicago, Chicago land, I guess I'll call it, because it's at the Marriott Neighborville. Um, it's in Neighborville, um, which is like, what, west? I think west southwest of Chicago but I've been to Naperville before and uh, the Marriott there is looks like it's gonna be awesome I never I don't think I've stayed there before at the Marriott I've stayed at other places there in Naperville but that is September the 5th at 7 p.m. Labor Day weekend so excited in fact I'm so excited because the uh, Labor Day weekend I used to always go there when Morris Cirillo would have his conference there um, went there many, many years, and now that he has passed on, I'm thinking, isn't it ironic that the Lord actually has me going to Chicago on Labor Day weekend? So, yay! Hey, I see Dawn, D.C. Linegar. Hello, Dawn. So, I'm so excited. I mean, it's such a beautiful day in Minnesota, and uh, so much is happening, so many venues are being scheduled it's hard to keep straight where i'm at um, and before i go down the list of the events i'm going to be doing in the next couple of months i did want to say this i am i am shocked remember how i've been playing the song by matthew west called truth be told it came out last year in october and i heard it first in i believe it was december or january and i listened to it like 30 times when I first heard it because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. I hope they play this throughout the country because everybody needs to listen to truth be told because it's it's honest. It's truth. It's the truth that there's so many people that go around with these wounds uh, being hurt, being broken, and they don't know how to fix them. You know, that's what Restored to Freedom does. That's what Jesus does is he takes the brokenhearted and he fixes them through forgiveness of the people that hurt them, that's the largest thing to do, and then repentance for our pride, because our pride stinks to high heaven, God doesn't like that. We have to humble ourselves. So whenever we've been hurt from the past, we always get pride, so it's a double whammy. So anyway, that song, Truth Be Told, I would play it before I would go through the soul wound healing in all of my sessions starting in February. And I'm playing it and playing it and playing it and I kept waiting for it to come out on the radio. I'm like, when's this song coming out on the radio? I'm like, oh my gosh, they aren't playing it. You know, February becomes March, and then April, and then May, then June, and I've never heard it played on the radio. And of course, I get um, XM Sirius uh, radio, satellite radio in my car, because I travel all over the place, and, and they never played it on the message. The message is like the contemporary Christian songs. So, when I was babysitting my brother's house for 10 days in Fort Wayne, Indiana, I heard it come on the radio for the first time. It came on WBCL 90.9, I think, and it kept coming on every day a couple of times. 
And I'm like, Lord, oh my gosh, is it ever going to be out on XM where I could listen to it on the message? And so today I was driving towards um, Northfield, Minnesota to do some errands and lo and behold, the song comes on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, finally, they're playing it all over America. So if you've not heard that song, it's so good, uh, especially if you've gone through wounds, especially, of course, everybody has, you know, being hurt from your father, hurt from your mother, hurt from sexual violations, from people, from siblings, from your spouse, your ex-spouse. We got to be honest, and that song's all about being honest because Jesus is waiting for us to be honest. And when we're honest, then he can do uh, the healing that needs to be done. Then, you know, when we forgive people who hurt us, then he can come in and heal our souls from those wounds. Then we have the legal right taken away from the demons, and we can command them to go in Jesus' name. And then they're gone. And you don't get your head filled with fifty to 60,000 thoughts a day. And you have peace. You don't have all the chatter. And it's a great thing. So anyway, I love it. I'm so happy that that song uh, was played first time I've ever heard it on uh, XM Radio on The Message. So be listening for it. And uh, I believe it will help help people to get a grip on being honest. Because that's one of the components of being delivered from those demonic thoughts that we have is being honest. And there's too many people out there that get... Uh, they go off on people. They get triggered from, from past wounds. And then they cause people to separate from them or leave them because they're like, hello, you're being crazy. And I'm not going to be <laughs> abused, yelled, screamed at. And then they're the ones that freak out because why? They still have soul wounds. It causes them to feel, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, someone's separating again. Someone's leaving. Well, it's because you got soul wounds. You need to deal with them. Get them healed so you don't go off on people and trigger, you know? That's what we need to do. So anyway, the song is called Truth Be Told by Matthew West. I love Matthew West. He has got some great songs. So Truth Be Told. And you can listen to it on YouTube. It's been out there since October of last year. That's when he came out with it. So it's amazing that it's waited until August, almost a full year, before they started playing it. So who knows? Maybe Restorative Freedom had a hand in that because I kept playing it every single time I did a breakthrough event. And maybe somebody finally said, hey, maybe we should start playing that song. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, super excited coming to Chicago, September 5th, Labor Day weekend, 7 p.m. at the Marriott Neighborville. So people are already signing up for that. And I just posted it this morning. So uh, not done any ads with it on Facebook yet. So um, excited about that. Um, in fact, we noticed on Facebook that it looks like they turned off the ability to invite people to events. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why would that, that happen? You know, it's really weird. Some of the Facebook glitches that are happening and it might be just social media trying to play with people and shut down our economy more by saying, Oh, you can't come to a live event. We don't want that. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. Uh, but I wouldn't put it past anyone at this point, so. All right, so this weekend, Rapid City, South Dakota, Mount Rushmore, the Badlands, the Black Hills. Um, love it, reminds me of the Great West. And it is, it's out west. It's about an eight hour drive from where I'm at. So I'm coming out there to the brand new courtyard by Marriott, again, this Saturday at 7 p.m. So come on out and Get your soul wounds healed and get freed and have peace and get healed of physical stuff. We see miracles happen with people. And then next weekend, I'll be back here in Lonsdale, Minnesota, south of Minneapolis, August 28th, a Friday night, 7 p.m. at this really large house. Oh, I hear the eagle. I hear the eagle. It's behind me. In fact, I saw three eagles already this morning as I was driving, hovering over the road. I see them all the time. So anyway, we'll see if the eagle gets closer and uh, does a flyover. Um, so anyway, right here, Lonsdale, Minnesota, uh, August 28th. We can fit about 50 people, I think, hopefully, into the home. Um, it's a rather large home. 
Um, or we can come outside. It's got a whole bunch of room outside. Of course, you have to have a lot of those citronella things here because the state bird, of course, is a mosquito for Minnesota because you have 10,000 lakes. And as a mosquito, it's just trying to nibble on my ear. Okay, then after next Friday, Lawnsdale, Minnesota, August 29th, I'll be up in Fargo, North Dakota, slash Moorhead, Minnesota, at the Courtyard by Marriott. Already we've got over 60 some people registered for that. I don't know what's going on there, but apparently a lot of people are wanting to get freed, which is uh, amazing. It's awesome. Uh, never been to do ministry up in the Fargo, North Dakota area, so I'm ready 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 to uh, go I've, I've been to all 50 states in business but now i'm coming back and doing ministry so again that's next saturday august 29th at 7 p.m central time then coming to chicago going to actually go to a person's home to do some private ministry for their friends at the home and then september 5th saturday i will be in naperville at the chicago marriott Naperville. Again, we talked about that already. That'll be at 7 p.m. And then the next weekend, this just got scheduled September 12th. I'll be in Anderson, Indiana at a home group that I've been to a long time ago before I started traveling full-time. So it's going to be awesome to know the folks and they love Restored to Freedom. They've seen the fruit and everything and all the lives, thousands of lives being freed around the world. It's amazing. So yay, 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 September 12th, September 19th, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. I've been there before. Um, it's a beautiful place and it is a home group. So come on out September the 19th, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Then I'm heading to Jacksonville, Florida, September 25th, 26th at the, it's, uh, it's the River House, but they're having it at a church and the church is called Harvest and I don't have it memorized yet. I just saw the name yesterday, sorry about that. But it is in Jacksonville, they can hold 300 people. So let's pack the house in Jacksonville. September 25th, 26th. Um, on the 25th, we'll be doing a regular breakthrough event. And then the 26th, I'll be doing a training. I haven't done a training for a while, so I'm excited. They've already had, I think, over 30 people that have been trained at the River House, maybe 35 now. Um, so looking forward to training up more people, getting more people set free and delivered. Um, and then I'm going, um, I'm not sure, um, in October, early October, I know then of the 25th, I'm supposed to be in Odessa, Texas, and then going to go vote, get out there and vote for President Trump. Yay. Let's see a landslide victory and justice will be served on all of those that are the evil people of the world. And then, let's see, December the 6th, I'm going out to California to Anaheim, Ecclesia Global, and I'll probably hang out there for a couple weeks in California before Christmas, so. All righty, so, um, my, my blog today, um, I've never talked about this before, and what's really cool about it is because I've been doing a lot of these personal sessions, even though I only have time for a couple of weeks, but... What's been amazing to me is I'm seeing a consistency and I asked the Lord about it and I said, is this really real and true? And he said, yes, it is. And what the consistency that I've been seeing over the last several months that I've been doing these is oftentimes people will have some anxiety and fear and I said, I don't know, I've always been like this, always, as long as I can remember, I've had fear. Which, of course, we know fear and anxiety are demonic spirits whispering to us in our thoughts, and we can't turn it off. That's our norm. You know, we grew up with that. And when that's our norm and that's all we've heard, then we're going to oftentimes trigger. Go off on people, get mad, not be calm, not be at peace, and ruin our own relationships. What a deal. So, and then blame them on top of it and get mad and lie <laughs> so instead of taking responsibility for ourselves. So, um, and a lot of that's the spirit of Jezebel, because uh, Jezebel, the core, gets fear. A person gets fear when they're growing up. They get either sexually touched, they get hurt by a father, by a mother, wounded in myri a myriad of ways, and they never get healed from that. So they hear a lot of the voices of the enemy, you know, 50 to 60,000 a day. 
and 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day is a lot of thoughts, a lot. So um, the consistency that I was seeing though was when I would do a personal session, I would always say, okay, tell me the earliest remembrance that you have of traumas. And a lot of them would say, well, huh. They were trying to think of the traumas, like, okay, my, my dad said this horrible thing to me, or my mom controlled me, or had sex with somebody that was an adult and I was a child, and all these things that were not good. So, but a lot of them were like, I don't know, ever since I was little, I just, I was, I was, I was anxious, I was fearful. And then I said, well, do you know when you were born, did you have any traumas? Was it a difficult pregnancy? Did your mom have a C-section and wasn't planning for it? Did the doctors say something to your mom, such as, oh my gosh, we, we, this is going to be scary. This, you know, we don't know. Something bad might happen. Did that ever happen? And a lot of them are like, yes. That's what my mom told me. Yes. Or, or they were born prematurely and they didn't get touched by their mom for uh, eight weeks, seven weeks, you know. And so all this stuff started to make sense to me as I'm going through these, because I would take people through the soul wound healing, going back to when they were born, or, and even in the womb, up, I hear the eagle, yay. And um, what we would do is we'd get that healed. We'd say, Jesus come, give them a word about it, and then the Lord would explain, say, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, your mother got into fear and through the umbilical cord, you got fear because of it. The enemy had legal right to the double whammy to come in through the mom. And of course, the mom is gonna have fear when they're told something bad could happen to their baby as long as they want their baby. And it made sense. And so then I started thinking, oh my gosh, I started seeing a, a constant theme of more and more people. And so now when I do a session for someone, I'm like, hey, do you know when you grew up, did you have some trauma. Did your mom ever say that? You know, and I've had so many people. So one person said that their mom had a car accident and then they ended up uh, giving birth. And uh, I think it was, I'm trying to think if it was a cesarean or not, but anyway, it was like two months early, two months early. And the mom didn't touch the boy for like eight weeks. And I've heard of others where they were born prematurely, others where there were C-sections, others where the doctors were giving a scary word. In fact, I remember when I used to do my uh, healing rooms back in Indiana, that there was a 13-year-old boy and his mom came into the healing rooms wanting prayer, say he's always in fear, he's always in fear. And so I ultimately at that point just kind of stumbled upon it and said, did anything happen when he was born? Any scary things? Well, well, yeah, it was horrible. Oh my gosh, it was so scary. Yes, the doctor said that I could have lost the baby and we had to do a C-section and I had so much fear. And I'm like, well, there you go. I go, you got fear and it kind of came in, affected your son. And they're like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. So now that I've seen it from my own eyes over and over and over again, I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to get the news out there. Of course, a lot of people probably already know this, but I'm kind of slow that way, I guess. <laughs> so anyways, um, I uh, wrote a blog uh, about it. First time I've ever done a blog on the birth. And it's resonating with a lot of people. A lot of people, again, you know, uh, and, and a lot of it I'm seeing, the, the fear gets into the, the mother, say the mom's whatever age, 18 to maybe younger than that, you know, 15, uh, up to whatever, 40 something. And if they're giving birth and the doctor starts to give a negative report, there's gonna be fear on the mom that comes into the baby. So probably both the mom and the child could struggle with fear and anxiety. And I've seen this a lot where you do have a, a mother, you know, if I'm, if I'm getting a person healed and delivered and they talk about their wounds and they say, oh yeah, my mom, she's anxious and fearful, you know, on tranquilizers and all this other medications. And I'm like, well, I go, then something happened to her when she was growing up that she was wounded, that she needs to get healed from. And so it comes down the bloodline and that can be inherited. You know, if you have a mother that's really fearful that you can pick it up 
And then before you know it, you're in anxiety, you're in fear. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then you end up getting married to somebody and then the person get married to you, probably chances are is they're more calm because that's what happens. We see people that are much more anxious and fearful that will marry people that are more calm, the opposites. And then that person has to deal with the fallout from all the anxiety and the fear. And often they could have controlling spirits and manipulative spirits and prideful and things like that. So it explains a lot. Up oh, there's the eagle. It's probably, I don't know, half a mile away, I'm guessing. You wonder what the eagles do every day. Up oh, there goes a monarch butterfly. Pretty. But uh, I was thinking, do eagles fly very far away from their nest? Because it seems like this one is within an hour radius of its nest, but I don't know. I don't have any camera on the eagle to see where the eagles go during the day. It's a screeching though. And I wonder, I need to do some research. Why do eagles screech? Is it because they are happy? Is it because they are trying to put fear into their prey? Maybe that's it. They see a rabbit half mile away and they start to screech and it causes the rabbit to freeze up so they have a target that's much easier to grab. Maybe that's what happens. Fear. Remember the enemy? The enemy, to attack its prey, you know, humans will try to threaten. Jezebel will try to threaten people and say, I will do this tomorrow to you, Elijah. The very same thing that you did to my Baal prophets today when you killed them. I'm going to kill you tomorrow. So it caused fear to come over Elijah. And then he takes off and runs after he has called the fire down from heaven and killed 850 prophets. So anyways, let's go back to the blog. So in 2020, I've done many inner healing and deliverance sessions with people who were involved in traumatic births. The person is a child. Trauma such as car accidents, on the way to delivery, unexpected cesarean sections, challenging births that cause fear in the mother, premature births. In all cases, the child has grown up struggling with fear and anxiety. And if the child did not have close physical touch with their mothers, then they struggle with feelings of rejection and abandonment throughout their lives and as adults causing them to have challenges in their relationships with their spouse and other people. I'll also add this too. I've had a lot of people that have commented about adoptions. We see this a lot is if a child ends up being adopted, then the enemy oftentimes will tell them that their biological mom and or dad didn't want them to try to cause feelings of rejection to come on them. And that's a natural thing that the enemy would try and do to mess up a person. So if you were adopted or if you've adopted other people, then what we need to do is to go back to get those soul wounds healed. Find out what the truth is. You know, when a person hears from the Lord that, well, the reason that your mother gave you up for adoption was because they were either too young, they couldn't afford, you know, they you know, just couldn't deal with it, whatever, then the Lord can help heal those soul wounds. And then you can command the demonic spirits to go that attach to those wounds. Then the person won't have all these feelings of rejection. And oh my gosh, when anybody ever says no to them, or doesn't hire them, or doesn't want to marry them, or doesn't want to date them, then they're not going to feel all this rejection and all the thoughts from the enemy coming on them. All right, let me go back to my blog. So when a child is born under duress, the enemy gains legal access to torment the, ch torment the child with fearful thoughts, usually for the rest of their life until they go through inner healing and deliverance, which what percentage of people do that? The church doesn't want us to talk about that in large part. There's some churches that will allow people to get delivered, but they really want to be on the lowdown and don't ever say that Christians can have demons. I'm like, oh yeah, don't ever tell them the truth <laughs> that they're hearing all these thoughts and it's a demonic thought that they're hearing. You know, put them on medication. You know, that'll that'll kick out the demons. No, it doesn't. It's uh, medicating them into a zombie and it doesn't get rid of the root cause. We want to get the root issues dislodged and expelled. So, 
All right, so when a child is born under duress, the enemy gains legal access to torment the child with fearful thoughts, usually for the rest of their life. Many of them experience up to 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day, of which 80% of the thoughts are negative and 95% are repetitive from the day before. And this is according to a study done by the National Science Foundation in 2005. So basically, all the children who are born prematurely, without close connections to their moms, will experience strong rejection, abandonment issues later in life as the demonic spirits whisper in their minds constantly and cause the person to self-sabotage their lives and relationships as they are not able to feel at peace being alone. Now, they'll have, um, and a lot of times people say, well, I just, I, I just can't stand to be alone. I can't stand to be by myself. Nope, nope. Got to always be in a relationship. You know, so they go from one relationship to another relationship. They can't go more, you know, than a year without being in a relationship. Um, and in many of those cases, I mean, in all those cases, it's because they're hearing demonic thoughts in their minds and they don't have peace. And then what will happen oftentimes is they want to latch on to someone and control, control, manipulate them and they get jealous and then that person has to breathe, and so they separate from them, and then the person freaks out, and then they go off on them, and then they tell other people lies, and but it's because they're feeling strong, demonic thoughts of rejection and abandonment, and if it doesn't ever get delivered and freed, they go from one relationship that breaks to another relationship that breaks, and another relationship that breaks, and that's how it works. They are codependent on others for their self-worth. Eagle, come closer. All right, they often smother their spouse or other relationships and feel a strong sense of abandonment uh, when someone separates from them for peace and just normal alone time. When the mother is in fear during her childbirth and the enemy has legal rights to transfer from the mother with that fear that's coming on them, into their baby, usually through the umbilical cord. In fact, what I'm going to do at the end of this, we're going to go through, thank you, Holy Spirit, um, a, an inner, inner healing session and a deliverance session for all of you who grew up and were born with either trauma at the time of your birth, or you were adopted, or... Um, you felt a lot of rejection and fear and stuff. You've always felt that. We're going to go through a healing of that at the end of this today. So it's going to be a, a fun uh, freedom session for everyone. You know, and a lot of you that have watched me probably have gone through this already, but I think that the Lord is specifically wanting to deal with all those who grew up and were hurt, either in the womb, at birth, or we're prematurely born and it's time to get healed from this stuff because you can't make healthy decisions you're not going to be calm you're not going to have peace you're going to hear a lot of demonic thoughts and you're going to feel rejected and torment 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 so let's get that set free today amen amen all right um so when the mother is in fear during her childbirth and the enemy has legal rights to transfer from the mother into their baby, usually through the umbilical cord, and then that child will hear the voice of the enemy when growing up, causing them to live in fear. Children who are born prematurely are not and are, and are not given access to be touched, loved on, and fed by their mothers will struggle with fear, rejection, and abandonment. And they will get triggered often whenever their spouse does not conform to their demands. So they often struggle with much strife in their marriage and other relationships. They often experience strife in relationships and go through broken marriages and divorce as the enemy speaks loudly in their thoughts, in their minds. That's a part of our soul. Their soul has been hurt. Our soul is our mind, our thoughts, our will, free will, and our emotions. So, what is the solution? People 
need to have their soul wounds healed by Jesus. And then they can command the demons that attach to their souls, their mind, will, and emotions to be gone so that they will no longer hear the thoughts that gave them that fear. It is amazing to see then how many feel such a peace and joy and feel lighter afterwards. Many also who had been struggling with sickness and disease also receive healing. So we're going to so basically we're going to command you know, then after that any demonic spirits to separate from your soul and then just ask Jesus to give you insight as to what happened when you were born. And he will either give you a word about it or a vision if any traumas happened during your birth. Then you can command every demonic spirit that attached to your wounds to go to the pit in Jesus' name. Uh, da, 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 da. So when we take away the legal rights of the demons to torment our minds with thoughts, we have much more peace and can hear the Lord and the Holy Spirit speak to us so that we can truly operate in the fruit of the Spirit instead of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 through 26 has a whole litany of the flesh. You know, when we don't get delivered from the stuff, we're going to hear 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day from the demonic spirits causing us to do things that are not godly, that are not fruit of the Spirit. So even though we're going to say we're Christians, because maybe we've said the words of let's have Jesus come into my heart, you still get tormented by the demons that have legal rights to hit your thoughts. And it's because there's still oftentimes unforgiveness for those who have hurt us. There's pride that comes in. And so we have to do our part to come out of agreement with the enemy. And then we can take authority, command the demonic stuff to go. And then we don't get those 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. We have peace. And then we can actually start flowing in the Holy Spirit all the time and living in peace. Peace is like a huge barometer if a person's been delivered. If the person's not peaceful, if they don't have good fruit, then they're being tormented by demons. And they're not going to be great people to be married to, <laughs> nor to have as a close friend. So, all right. Um, fear, anxiety, rejection, and abandonment are simply wounds that the demons attach to. And it could be, again, at birth that this happened. It could be, um, you know, whenever you get wounded, you get wounded as you get older, when you're a child as well from a father, from a mother, from a stepfather, stepmother. So we need to get all the wounds healed. And you get the wounds healed, then you get peace. You don't hear those thoughts anymore. All right, so fear, anxiety, rejection, abandonment are simply wounds that the demons attach to which give us thoughts to torment us. Satan wants to hurt us as soon as we are conceived. So at the point that we are in the womb, conceived, you know, one second after sexual intimacy happens the enemy wants to come against he wants to hurt the children obviously he would love to kill and abort the children um, sacrificing it to his demons of Moloch like uh, Jezebel did back in 1st Kings and 2nd Kings um, but let's say that you're in the womb and you had a dad that didn't want you maybe he found out that you were a girl and he always wanted a boy and then you grow up and you're heard all the time that, oh, I was really wishing you were a boy. So what does that do to the actual girl? She gets thoughts from the demons telling her, you should be like a boy. And you're like, yeah, yeah, then I'll get the love from my dad. So then you start to work really, really hard. And I've heard, heard the stories all the time. And you start to maybe even kind of look more like a boy, have short hair. And, um, and then they're uh, trying to get unconditional love from the father but they don't get it you know, they may get some you know I've seen uh, growing up on the farm where these girls become very tomboyish because the dad wanted boys to help work on the farm uh, but you can imagine there's a myriad of ways that a child's gonna get hit hurt in the womb if you have a mother uh, that didn't want the child it will feel rejected if you had a father that didn't want the child so you may not even know this and this explains it all Oh my gosh, revelation, boom. That's why I always felt rejected then. Oh my gosh, my mom or my dad or my whatever, grandparents told me they didn't want me. Or you may not have ever known it. They may have never told you. 
You know, I've had some uh, people I've taken through deliverance where their moms will tell them, I never wanted you. Boy, it would have been much better for me if you were, were dead. I'm like, seriously? Who would say that? Well, someone that's got demonic spirits. A mom that hasn't been delivered yet. So, so yeah, so Satan wants to hurt us as soon as we're conceived. So when a baby begins to form and the mother or father either loves it or hates it, then the baby will be affected one way or the other. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18:21 It says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So it's critical that we speak love and positive words over our babies in the womb. Our babies will be affected by those words that we speak out loud and actions taken. Out loud and taken, actions taken. If trauma happened to us, then we can reverse the curses of fear and rejection and other negative feelings by breaking them off with our words in Jesus' name, by forgiving those who hurt us and giving them to the Lord, and by humbling ourselves. So, what I'm going to do is let's go through some soul wound healing, and we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what happens because I really sense the Lord wants to heal people always he wants to heal people of their wounds and If that is where you can think about this if that's when the trauma started when you're the youngest It's gonna affect you the rest of your life. You know as you get older you'll have broken relationships So you'll have more traumas because of that. But let's go back to the root So right now, this is what I would do in a personal session Um so I just say, Heavenly Father, I just ask you to come. Holy Spirit, come in Jesus' name. Can we silence the voice of all demonic spirits on all those that are watching in Jesus' name? Declare that you cannot speak to them in Jesus' name. All right, and now we just ask Holy Spirit to show them when they were born, whether they were in the womb, or they were born early, or they were not wanted. Now we just separate off every demonic spirit from the soul wound and their soul in Jesus' name. We separate it out in Jesus' name. And now we ask Jesus to come to give them a word to heal. Describe for them why, what happened. Explain it to them so that they can be healed. All right, so I'm just going to get quiet and let you hear. Okay, some of you I'm hearing the Lord saying, yes, your father rejected you in the womb, did not want you. And some of you, your mother did not want you. And some of you were born under very scary circumstances where fear did come in through your mother. Others were born early as the enemy wanted to take you out early and kill you. But instead, you didn't die, but you felt rejected strongly because your mother was not able to touch you. And that's what's affecting you now, while you always have to be in a relationship. The Lord says, but I want to heal you of that now my daughter, my son, and I will take away the pain because I wanted you, I love you, and there are great things that I see in your future that I will use you for. And one of them is to help others who have been rejected, who have been hurt in the wound, who, has, who have been born prematurely, others that have gone through that can be healed for that is the spiritual root of many 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 of you on earth where the enemy tried to hurt you before 
you even became part of this world. The Lord says, I love you, and I will heal you now. All right, so now we take authority. We command every demonic spirit that attached to those wounds in your soul to go to the pit now, in Jesus' name. We command them right now to be gone. And we just release right now, Lord. We just release the peace that passes all understanding on all those that are watching this live and recorded in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, give them peace, Lord, in their spirits. We thank you, Father, for healing their souls, their minds, their wills, their emotions, healing their hearts as well in Jesus' name. release peace, love, joy, childlike innocence be restored in Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Lord, that you want your people to be healthy and whole emotionally, physically. We can break off physical sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We declare health and wholeness throughout every cell in their bodies in Jesus name. The Lord says, "Yes, my children, I love you, and I will bless you. For when we take the legal right of the enemy away, then the healing can take place. So we thank you, Father God, for healing all of us from rejection, from betrayal feelings, from uh, pain, from uh, fear and anxiety. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We declare amen and amen. Now, some of you might feel lighter. Some of you might feel heat on your head, on your body. And uh, that's what the Lord does normally when, he, when I see a lot of healing, um, as he helps to overcome a lot of the stuff that the enemy put on you, and you'll feel better feel more calm and um, so we thank you for that Lord thank you God in Jesus name amen amen so if you want to comment on there let me know if you're feeling any different if anything happened you know physically you can feel heat on your head yay yeah there was a guy um, it was yesterday who felt a lot of heat on his head and he said they had the air conditioner like blown on him <laughs> and he's like oh my gosh this is amazing this is awesome i feel heat and i shouldn't i shouldn't feel heat so we knew it was supernatural and he knew god was doing something and another person had felt um kind of a breeze or a light breeze that were on them so yay getting hot yay tears praise the lord yeah, I mean, this makes so much sense, is if we don't go back to the time of birth, you feel calmer, lighter, yay. Praise the Lord, Jessica, yay. Yeah, when, if we don't go back to the very beginning, you know, and we go to counseling sessions and stuff with people, normally they'll try and say, okay, what bad things happened to you? And our memories might be starting at age five or something, but if we were born under duress, under stress, under fear, then that explains everything. We need to go back and get that healed. And then you'll get the legal rights taken away from the enemy and you can command that stuff to go in Jesus' name. And then, oh my gosh, you feel great. You feel good. You've got peace. You've got joy. So we thank you, Father God, just released, Lord, the childlike innocence of everyone, more joy, more laughter, more fun. Thank you, Father, for the healings that you're able to do, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. It's like supernatural heart surgery where the Lord is healing um, and bringing in the peace. So we thank you, Father, for that. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love your people and you want them freed. So amazing. Yeah, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. You know, I didn't have any idea about this until <laughs> recently, and I was like, oh my gosh, everybody seems to are now talking about when they were born and that there was trauma. 
And I'm thinking, in fact, when I, when I would do a session with uh, people, I would interrogate the top two demonic either spirits or the functionality of them to find out when they gained access to start tormenting the person. And inevitably, they would say it was at birth. And I'm like, oh my gosh, at birth? Well, that makes sense. You know, why would the enemy wait? If he can get you at birth, then it can affect you for the rest of your life. And you don't have any remembrance of it unless your mom tells you or your dad, if your dad's still in your life, hopefully. But, you know, I don't, I don't have a clue about my, my mom's passed on, so I don't know. As far as I know, my mom had a normal birth, as far as what she told me. But if you know of people who have told you that at birth they were born prematurely, they had trauma, fear came on their mom, let them know, share this, tag them, um, you know, because the Holy Spirit wants to get everybody set free and delivered. So, yeah, you feel lighter. Praise the Lord. It's amazing. So, uh, I'm going to start doing this from now on when I do my sessions, my corporate sessions, as well as my personal sessions, is I'm going to make sure that we pray to break off stuff from the time they were born to even in the womb. Because we all need to because it's, in fact, I, I, I hear this a lot too, is a mom will tell me that whatever, they have three kids, four kids, five kids, but they have one, or maybe a couple, that are very anxious, very fearful. And then uh, there's one that I recently asked about this. I'm like, anything happen at their birth? Well, yeah, it was very scary. Had to do a C-section. Oh my gosh, I thought we were gonna lose them. I'm like, oh my gosh, ding, 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 ding. That explains it, fear came in had legal right because you were in fear it came down the bloodline into your umbilical cord throughout into the child and the child then inherited that so now we can break it off so i'm going to do that from now on and uh, again i wish i could get downloaded every single thing that um, would help be a hundred percent getting people set freed but uh, i guess it takes time sometimes the lord uh, most times doesn't give us everything and we have to uh, press in so so we thank you heavenly father lord for this revelation again i'm probably late to the table and others and deliverance have known about this for years I, mean, I, I guess i've been aware of it for a couple of years as far as fear at birth but it didn't really click until i started seeing person after person after person after person telling me that they had fear and they had a very scary birth and at that point i'm like oh my gosh this is a constant theme we should take care of that so yay alrighty um, so I will be this Saturday night at the in Rapid City South Dakota at the courtyard by Marriott uh, 7 p.m. for our next breakthrough event and then August 28th I'll be back here at the uh, uh, Lonsdale Minnesota home that will be on a Friday night 7 p.m. next week and then the next Saturday, August 29th, Fargo, North Dakota, Moorhead, Minnesota. I'll be at the courtyard there um, in Moorhead. Again, we've already got like 50-some people registered. I think, no, 60-some people registered there. And then September 5th, Naperville, Chicago land, Marriott. Come on out September 5th. The event is on my page, Restoring Your Freedom, so you can say that you're going. Um, you also can sign up on the Eventbrite. And September 12th, Anderson, Indiana. That's brand new, home group. September 19th, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And September 25th, 26th, Jacksonville, Florida. So I'm busy every weekend for the next two months. So yay, yay God, I love it. So we thank Heavenly Father God. We just declare blessings, Lord, on everyone right now, Lord. Let them, Heavenly Father God, just feel your peace and your joy and to no longer have any more of the anxiety and fear thoughts. We thank you, Father, that they'll take every thought captive in Jesus' name. We praise you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Lord Jesus. So again, it's pretty basic. We get wounds from people. People say things and do things, and they hurt us. 
And then those wounds allow demonic spirits to keep speaking to us, reminding us about the injustices and the traumas. And then we end up hurting other people. We pass it on. So to get delivered, we have to forgive people that hurt us that we know about. Again, when we're growing up, we don't know about the fear thing because we're just too little to even remember it. So I'd love this uh, to explain something else that gives the enemy legal rights to torment. I love to expose the enemy so that we can be honest and truthful and find how to get freed from all this stuff. So anyways, um, yay, we are what more than halfway through August, getting to approach the month of September, then October, then November. And election day, what, November 3rd, I think it is? I can still hear the eagle. It's probably a half mile away. He must not have decided to come back for the broadcast, so. Which is fine, that's cool. He's doing his eagling and uh, looking in at squirrels and uh, screeching, putting them into fear so that he can attack them and eat them easier. <laughs> so, alrighty. Well, I guess I will let you guys go. So have an awesome rest of your day. And I will not do Facebook Live tomorrow. I'll be driving for a long time to Rapid City. But I think I might do it when I'm in Rapid City. I might do it in front of Mount Rushmore on Friday. And uh, maybe we'll do some prayer for the president. So, alrighty. I will let you guys go. Love ya. See ya. Bye-bye.